The horror, the horror. These are the chilling lines from the epic 1979 war movie Apocalypse Now. Set during the Vietnam War, the story centers around US Army Captain and Assassin Willard, played by Martin Sheen, who is going through a breakdown. Willard has been hired by special forces to put a stop to Colonel Kurtz, played by Marlon Brando, whom has seemingly gone rogue and insane. So Willard and his team of soldiers head down on a riverboat to complete their objective. This movie is honestly like no other. As you watch it, it feels more and more like you're watching a descent into madness. And as the movie goes on, so does the loss of sanity and humanity. Apocalypse Now is like a warped fever dream of stepping into the unknown. And that unknown that we reach is truly terrifying. Thankfully, Apocalypse Now was an easy shoot, and there was absolutely no problems while making it. <laughs> okay, spoilers, making this movie was an absolute nightmare. So let's peel back the layers, nightmare by nightmare, as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Apocalypse Now. Let's check it out. Although, maybe afterwards you might be regretting us checking it out, but either way, let's go. Morning. Number 10, based on a book ish. Apocalypse Now is loosely based on an 1899 novel called Heart of Darkness, which was written by Polish British novelist Joseph Conrad. Unlike Apocalypse Now, which is set in the Vietnam War during the 1960s, Heart of Darkness takes place in 19th century Congo. It tells of the exploits of English sailor. Charles Marlowe, who is travelling on a steamboat along the Congo River, where many dangerous obstacles and hurdles await him, including a corrupt British officer called Mr. Kurtz, whom has seemingly gone insane, but is worshipped by a local tribe. And yes, the book even features the memorable words, the horror, the horror. The horror. Heart of Darkness is a haunting tale which, like Apocalypse Now, is kind of like a descent into madness, with the characters not only reaching the furthest bounds of what they perceive to be civilization, but also the furthest reaches of their minds. The book has received great praise, and has become a classic, and something of a haunting must read over the generations, up there with the likes of Lord of the Flies. And some people even claim the book to be an important commentary on imperialism. Number 9. George Lucas was the original director. So the concept of Apocalypse Now, the movie, starts with filmmaker John Milius. It was 1967, and while working as Francis Ford Coppola's assistant on the movie The Rain People, Milius wanted to join the Vietnam War, but he couldn't because he had asthma. So George Lucas and Steven Spielberg encouraged him to write a movie about the Vietnam War instead. <laughs> yeah, I like to think that back in the 60s and 70s, all these young guys who would become the biggest filmmakers in the world were just, you know, hanging out. Milius used The Heart of Darkness as a sort of blueprint, where he wrote Apocalypse Now, where he would write a whopping 10 different scripts of the movie. Warner Brothers purchased one of the scripts in 1969, and Milius asked his friend George Lucas if he would direct the movie, and he agreed. Lucas spent about a year working on the project with Milius, till he dropped out to direct his first feature film, THX 1138, but he said that he'll come back to work on Apocalypse Now after making that, but instead he made American Graffiti. And after that he made Star Wars, and well, the rest was history. So what would Apocalypse Now have been like under George Lucas's direction? Well, there are several claims as to what ideas he was going for. One being that he wanted the movie to be filmed in black and white. The other one being that he saw the movie as being a black comedy and set the movie in California. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, but often with stories like these, sometimes it's hard to know what's true and what's a crap sandwich full of baloney. Number 8. The Determination of Francis Ford Coppola George Lucas may have left the director's chair of Apocalypse Now, but fellow director Francis Ford Coppola was really interested to take over the reins and to get this beast made, and so he bought the rights off Warner Brothers, with United Artists agreeing to distribute it. Coppola was determined to create a unique movie experience, one that engulfs the viewers with the psychological and physiological horrors of war, particularly the Vietnam War, and even the psychedelic horrors too. There was one problem though, he was struggling to get funding, so Coppola took matters into his own hand and put a huge chunk of his own money into the production, and in doing so, he had to sign away his vineyard to the bank. Yeah, Coppola threw everything and the kitchen sink into the movie. Literally, because if the movie was a flop, he would be saying goodbye to his kitchen sink, as he would have become bankrupt. Yep, Coppola really put his whole life at stake to make this movie, so he must have really wanted to make it. Number 7. The original lead was fired. So the search was on to find the movie's main lead, the tragic and complex Willard, who we follow throughout the movie. Many big actors of the time were offered the part, but they all pretty much turned it down as they didn't want to leave America and shoot in a tropical jungle, including Jack Nicholson, Al Pacino, Steve McQueen, Clint Eastwood and James Kahn. However, Coppola felt that he found his Willard in the form of actor Harvey Keitel, supposedly because he liked his performance in the movie Mean Streets. Keitel flew to the location and had started filming, six weeks worth to be precise, but Coppola felt that Keitel just wasn't giving the performance that he had envisioned, so Keitel was let go. After all, the movie had to be perfect. I mean, come on, Coppola had his vineyard at stake here. So actor Martin Sheen was brought in as a quick replacement, as Coppola remembered his audition for Michael for The Godfather and was impressed with it. And Sheen is perfect as Willard. You can just feel his tragic and tortured soul in the movie. However, this meant that all the scenes previously shot with Keitel had to be shot again, which cost the production even more setbacks and money. Time and money that Coppola didn't really have. I mean, come on, think of the vineyard. Number 6. The movie drastically went over budget and schedule. Francis Ford Coppola had to find the right jungle setting to recreate the Vietnam War. It was while promoting The Godfather Part 2 in Australia that Coppola considered filming in Australia, namely Cairns, Queensland, due to the location's jungle settings. The US military were asked if they would help with production assistance and equipment, but they refused, and supposedly put pressure on the Filipino and Australian military to not help with the movie. I guess they really did not like Apocalypse Now. But the production decided to film in the Philippines, namely the Filipino island of Bela, as they could use US military equipment there. And to say that the shoot was tough would be an understatement. Apocalypse Now is famously known for what a tough shoot it was. Many setbacks and hiatuses would take place during the filming, including a hiatus to accommodate for Marlon Brando when he was cast. And to make matters worse, a typhoon hit the location where the movie was being filmed, namely Typhoon Olga, destroying the movie's sets and equipment, in which the sets and equipment would have to be rebuilt and replaced. Not to mention the fact that the shoot took place during a civil war at the Philippines, making the location a little bit tricky to film in at times. What was initially meant to be a mere 14-week shoot ended up lasting over two years, which also caused the movie to go extremely over budget and, of course, over schedule. The pressure was on Coppola. He had to make the movie work. He had everything riding on it, and during this chaotic shoot, he supposedly had several moments of complete mental breakdowns, and he lost a lot of weight, so he clearly was not in the best of health. Something else that could be attributed to the movie's long-lasting shoot is that Coppola was a perfectionist and wanted to get everything shot to his specific vision. So much so, Coppola had filmed more than 1.5 million feet of footage. <laughs> wow! Coppola added that while making Apocalypse Now, little by little, he and the crew went insane. But it was about to get a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> Number 5. Then Martin Sheen nearly died. 
If all the setbacks, budget increases, and dangerous weather wasn't bad enough, the production of Apocalypse Now nearly lost its main star, Martin Sheen. While filming on location, Sheen had suffered a heart attack, and according to Collider.com, he had to crawl to the side of the road, where he was picked up by a bus and was subsequently airlifted to hospital via helicopter. And apparently he was in such bad form, a priest at the hospital read him his last rites. Sheen thankfully made a full recovery, but news of his heart attack had spread back to Hollywood. According to Variety.com, in order to get past production executives and insurance companies, he had to lie and say that he was ill due to heat stroke, but Sheen would later put his heart attack down to all the stress he endured during the shoot. Apparently, while making Apocalypse Now, Sheen was engaging in a lot of heavy drinking. That, and he had a nervous breakdown. And of course, his heart attack once again caused delays, and thus even more money to be spent on the movie where for some shots, a body double was used. By the sounds of it, he just barely made it through the shoot. Literally. Number 4. The Price You Pay For Marlon Brando Okay, the production may have had to suffer through Typhoon Olga, but it almost didn't survive Hurricane Brando. When it came to casting the truly terrifying character of Colonel Kurtz, Coppola's original choice for the part was Orson Welles, but he didn't want to do it, as well as Lee Marvin, but he also didn't want to do it. Coppola ended up casting Marlon Brando, as he had previously worked with Brando on The Godfather. And wow! Brando came with his own string of problems. Now, Brando was paid $3 million for his efforts, which only added to the ballooning budget. He showed up on location quite late into the shoot, and when he turned up, everyone was shocked with how much weight he was carrying. It was assumed that Brando would be in shape as he was playing a colonel, but instead he arrived largely overweight. This meant that all costumes that were made for Brando had to be scrapped, and a new wardrobe had to be quickly put together. It's because of his large frame that a great deal of Brando's scenes were filmed with his character lurking in the shadows, which I actually find to be a happy accident, as it makes the character that little bit extra eerie and mysterious, and otherworldliness. He also didn't bother to learn any of his lines, and often his lines would have to be written down and would have to be held up to show him while he was filming his scenes. And failing that, the camera would just film him rambling. He also had a massive falling out with co-star Dennis Hopper, refusing to be on set with him, as well as Coppola himself. I honestly think, once again, just filming Brando's on-the-spot ramblings and his awkward delivery of lines oddly enhances the character. It kind of made him odd, like he was insane and had a disconnect with reality, as if he lost the ability to use basic mannerisms and communications. I guess, after all, it's Brando and you get what you pay for. Horror has a face, and you must make a friend of horror. I always feel that in Apocalypse Now, Brando almost comes across as not being quite human. Yeah, it sounds weird, I can't explain it. Number three, the production got into legal trouble for ghoulish reasons. For the scenes where corpses were shown, originally, real corpses were used, taking the production into really icky ghoulish territories. The corpses were brought onto the set by a local grave robber. Yep, just when the production couldn't get any crazier, we have grave robbers thrown into the mix. When the local police found out about this, they confiscated all the crew's passports and interviewed them. Lucky for them, they weren't in serious trouble, but all the corpses were taken away. And so to film the scenes with dead people, extras were used to act as human cadavers. Which makes me think, why didn't they just do that in the first place? Surely that's easier and more practical and ethical than getting some guy to dig graves. Like, come on, what the heck is going on here? And it doesn't end there either. In the movie's climax, we see a water buffalo getting slaughtered, which is edited together with the Kurtz character also being slaughtered by Willard. The slaughter was performed by a local tribe, and although filming such scenes didn't breach any laws in the Philippines, the American Humane Society were very much against this and deemed Apocalypse Now to be unacceptable. And as someone who doesn't like animal cruelty, it is a shocking thing to see. I can remember watching the movie for the first time and being like, oh wow, that just happened. Is this Apocalypse Now or Apocalypse Cow? 
Number two, the original cut. So with the production returning to the States, with all the filming wrapped up, everyone involved was no doubt really happy to get back home and to leave this nightmare behind them. And in some cases, maybe even start healing. Except, just as with everything else associated with Apocalypse Now, it wasn't that easy. Coppola went over the footage and realised that more shots were needed, as well as a new ending. So probably to the agony and dismay to all involved, the cast and crew had to go back to the Philippines for more filming. Then finally, with all the filming now done, Coppola edited a first cut, which was five hours long, and the music featured throughout this cut was nothing but music by the band The Doors. Coppola went to UCLA Film School with Jim Morrison, where they became friends, and he remained good friends with the rest of the band, and they gave him master recordings of their music. But all the Doors music was replaced by background music by Coppola himself and his father, Carmen Coppola, although the song The End did remain in the movie's intro. The theatrical cut of the movie was cut down to 153 minutes. In 2001, Coppola released a special edition, which had additional scenes. And then in 2019, another special edition called The Final Cut came out, which ran for three hours. Yikes. Even as late as 2019, Coppola was still working on his epic war movie. Like an artist trying to perfect his sculpture and constantly working on it and carving it and just trying to mold it into what he wants it to be. Making this movie to his preferred vision took 50 years, from 1969 to 2019. Probably making it one of the longest movie productions ever. And yet, there's still probably enough unused footage that we've never seen before to make another movie out of it. Maybe even a few of them. Number 1. Apocalypse Right Now Apocalypse Now finally had its mainstream release in August 1979, and this was the big one. The one that Coppola depended on more than anything on being a success. And, well, it got pretty mixed reviews, with Good Morning America calling it a disappointing failure. <laughs> Ouch. But don't worry, there were good reviews too. After all, everyone's go-to critic Roger Ebert loved it. Apocalypse Now was a massive financial success, making $150 million on a $30 million budget. So Coppola's vineyard was safe, and his hard work and efforts paid off. But it still seems that he and many of the crew and cast barely made it out of the shoot alive, with the behind-the-scenes story of the movie becoming legend, and just as talked about as the movie itself. Apocalypse Now would get nominated for eight Academy Awards, and would win two of those nominations. The movie is now regarded as a masterpiece, and one of the greatest movies of all time, as well as being one of the greatest war movies of all time, and a magnificent work of art in general. To me, Apocalypse Now isn't really a movie per se, it's an experience. A haunting experience like no other that shows you the true horrors of war and takes you on a truly disturbing journey down the dark recesses of the mind. It's not a happy or positive movie, but that's okay. Not all drama has to be. In all honesty, this is a really chilling movie. One that's built up on the essence of desperation and madness. And that alone makes it worth seeing this movie. Even if you only see it once, you'll be glad that you experienced it, as it is an experience like no other. Seriously, doing research for this episode was like going down a deep rabbit hole of insanity itself. There was just so much to unload, and so much crazy stuff coming at me left and right, stuff of which that I wanted to add in, but just all this overabundance and overstimuli of just weird and insane information left me with a splitting headache while doing research for this episode. But remember, if you do watch Apocalypse Now, it's pretty full on. It's not light viewing. It doesn't shy away from its disturbing subject matter. And it is a long movie experience. Anyway, I'm Minty. And did Apocalypse Now, did anyone else get really stressed out when that little puppy was thrown into the mix and just think to themselves, nothing had better happen to that dog? By the way, what did happen to the dog? I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that.
See ya!